Hello, I'm Travis Shaddix. I'm the market manager for Harrell's. I'm here with Raymond Snyder, the R&D product development manager for Harrell's. Glad to be with you. Today, we're going to be talking about adjuvants, describing their value. How do they work? What do they do? Maybe briefly giving some examples of our adjuvant line and where you may or may not find a good fit for them in your management program. So, what is an adjuvant? What would be a definition that a turf manager would would find useful for them? You know, I think a, a definition useful to our industry for an adjuvant would be a product that enhances the efficacy of an applied plant protectant. Okay. And, you know, the adjuvants really serve to help uh, reduce surface tension, increase the distribution of an applied material to a leaf surface, and on occasion, enhance the penetration of an applied product through the cuticle into the plant. That's what they do. They increase uh, efficiency of the product by spreading the, the solution across the leaf surface and absorption through the, the cuticle. And they do that by reduction of the, the surface tension of, of water. So here's another example with crabgrass where the water drop with the first one that I touch actually completely runs off the leaf. Now, I kind of like this example because imagine if that water droplet there was the water droplet with your product in it that you're interested in. It's not even on the leaf tissue anymore. So, any foliar product, even fertilizers, would it be useful with fertilizers as well? Yeah. Foliar fertilizer. Sure. So, here's the water droplet and we touch it with a, an adjuvant and you see that water just slowly slip over the entire leaf surface. So, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that without the product in – a certain amount of the leaf surface was covered and you're only going to have a certain amount of product uptake, whether it's nutrients or pesticides. And yeah. now you see the leaf surface far more covered. And that's, and that's a great example. I'll imagine, if you will, a plant control product within that droplet spreading uniformly over the target pest. That mm -hmm. That's a really useful example. Those were examples of actual water droplets and it's not real life. We have a little toothpick. We're kind of showing the surface tension issue. We're showing the influence of adding an adjuvant to a water droplet, trying to show that, magnify that influence for, for a video. Um, but we don't do that in real life. We spray it out. And what I wanted to attempt to show here was show the, the weed of the target pest we're looking at being sprayed with water and then coming back and spraying that same target pest with an adjuvant. And you see the first spray, there's beads of water. And then the second sprays we see here those beads of water disappear, but it's important, to, I think, to point out to the viewers that the water didn't disappear. It slicked over the leaf surface, correct? Yeah, I mean, that first spray was, was a great example of what happens when spray droplets are applied to a target pest in the absence of a surfactant. And uh, in, in that second spray, you can clearly see the addition of the surfactant really helped move and distribute those fine water droplets over the complete leaf surface. And that's really going to promote the efficacy and efficiency of that applied herbicide. So here we have a particularly uh, unique weed in the sense that it is very, very capable of repelling water. It's, this is chamber bitters. And as I even did this, I was amazed at how little water even stayed on the leaf at all, period. There's beading on it. Okay, you see some beads here. But that is secondary, I think, to the plant's ability to completely repel all the water completely off the leaf. So, imagine, you know, how challenging this weed would be if you had a herbicide in solution and you sprayed it out without an adjuvant. There's, there's no herbicide on the plant. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, if you had a herbicide that was designed for foliar uptake applied in the absence of, of the surfactant, the majority of that spray solution is going to end up on the non-target turf. Exactly. Okay. And at that point, you're relying on root uptake, which may not be the ideal function of that herbicide. And so, here you see the leaf when we, you know, right afterwards, you spray it with uh, the solution with the adjuvant in it. And you see every leaf in this particular case is is moistened as there's water on every leaf. So, um, just another example of this particular weed being challenging weed to wet, um, being very easy to wet with the presence of an adjuvant in the solution. Yeah, and if that's a great example where if you're spot spraying and you're using a surfactant, you're minimizing the droplets or residue via drift or, or re repelling from that target plant that's going to end up on the non-target plant, mm -hmm. thereby reducing undesired tip burn or turf loss. Here's an example where, okay, we've gone from a very small micro example of a one droplet with a toothpick, then we stepped it up to where we're physically spraying it with a water bottle, a little bit more realistic. In this case, this is actually a spray rig itself with normal nozzles like a normal um, superintendent would use or a turf manager would use. We're spraying it out at 40 gallons an acre. This is a, no this is a real situation. And what I wanted to show here was that the same thing occurs 
but it may not necessarily be as obvious, particularly on a video, it may not necessarily be as obvious to show that slicking of the surface. So as we spray, the one on the left has just water. The one on the right has the high rate of non-ionic penetrant. So I think it's 0.5% by volume, I believe is the high rate of the non-ionic penetrant. So this to me is not quite so wow factor as the smaller ones, but the same thing is occurring. It's just more challenging to, to see on a video when you're spraying across the surface. So we see spurge with and without the adjuvant. I mean, that's a great example where there may not be a significant wow factor, but upon close inspection, there's definitely an increase in the leaf coverage of the applied water. You know, 40 to 50 gallons per acre is pretty common mm -hmm. water volume. But even with that, it's, it's not a great volume of water when you're applying it over the surface of an entire acre. So, in these type of situations, clearly the addition of an adjuvant is going to greatly improve the overall surface coverage of the applied materials.